to follow. Yes, we need 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 to follow. Yes, ah, we need it. We need it to follow our life. We need to follow. We need it. We need it to follow our life. The refugee and host women beneficiaries echo their voices of gratitude for the skills attained and effectively applied to better their day-to-day -day lives. This was under a three-year project titled Leadership and Communication Initiatives for South Sudanese Refugees and Host Community in Ajumani and Yumbe districts. The project was implemented by Refugee Law Project with funding support from UN Women and the Royal Norwegian Embassy. Alia Rose Duku is a mother with eight dependents. The South Sudanese refugee woman living in Pagirinya settlement in a Germanic district could never have dreamt of competing for the same position with men in her community because of the cultural barriers in her home country of origin. After she attended a training in leadership skills, she decided to break the odds and contested for chairperson refugee welfare council position, a position believed to be a preserve of the men in her community. When we get the training, we found that we are, as women were given a chance of also contesting to, to become a, a LC or SRWC1 in the block. That thing also it has really encouraged me because they say that as women, you can also be a, a block leader, a chairperson in that block. So that's why I also uh, take that courage and then I, I contest for RWC1. She now uses the knowledge to mobilize fellow women to take up leadership positions and start up livelihood activities. These have built resilience and self-reliance among the refugee and host community women. There are women actually who also stood up and they become leaders from the encouragement I gave them. Uh, one of them is, uh, become the vice, then the other one become uh, the children affair, then another one is a uh, secretary for health, vice chairperson for RWC2, vice chairperson for RWC1, secretary for environment and production, secretary for children affair the Secretary for Children Affairs, RWC2, Secretary for Disability, uh, Opinion Leader, she's a Denka. In my blog, uh, I have the Women Leader, then the, the Secretary for Disability, then the, the Secretary for Information. Yeah, those are the positions that uh, women has, have really taken. We are trained on the responsibility of a women leader. And the, one of my responsibility is to mobilize women for saving groups. Women are now in saving groups. They are in good number because they know the benefit of now saving. In a month, they serve twice. On 15, then on 30. You just save the money you get. Even if 100, if you want to save that one, on that day, you just give. Uh, in terms of uh, livelihood, I, 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 I see that uh, there's a really great change. Dumbula Esther, having acquired various skills from Refugee Law Project, is now a vice chairperson in her zone, a paralegal, and an interpreter, making her a voice to the voiceless. When Refugee Law Project put an advert of interpreters, I applied, I went through, they also trained us for a number of days. After that training, so they came and called me that I should work together with them. I move where there are meetings. Some of these people also call me to go and interpret. It is also our duty to ensure that after childbirth we register our children and then we also take them for immunization. They have they come and had done that the woman had well abo had can jena well do. So I am really popular to some of these partners, they can even 
call me to go and interpret. When I see there's, there's a woman who is taken to the police and who does not speak English, I make sure whether being on footing, a bicycle, I have to follow this person up to the police station. When this person is trying to write a statement, I have to interpret what she is saying or he is saying to the police. She demonstrates how language is an important aspect in the endeavor to achieve access to justice and the confidence with which she speaks is a clear manifestation of empowerment. When we were brought in the settlement, we tried to come up as leaders but we could not because the experience, we were not taught. But after when UN Women came in with this project of empowering women, I was really trained under leadership skills. There are a lot of things, public speaking, how you can handle, how women can, can also raise their issues. So after that training, I really gained a lot. I'm not as usual. When time for elections and the RWC once came in, I stood as the vice chairperson of the village. I went through and opposed. When anything happens bad in somebody's family, as being a leader, a trained leader, I can go to that family and talk to the family members. If there are challenges, I can also gather my women together. We have to see what is wrong within our village, what is happening within, the, 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 within ourselves as women. So I just stood with the purpose of standing for women. I need women to know their rights. Socially, some negative cultural norms and beliefs that kept women behind in the community are changing. For example, the women are now able to participate in decisions that affect them. South Sudan, for us, women turn us to be the, their properties. Whenever they want to kill us, they can just kill us. You see? So when we reach here, uh, we get those training, then it has empowered us. We found that we also have a, a right to life. Hmm? Because there, when, when you had been killed, even your, 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 your father cannot come and ask the man, why you kill my daughter? Because this, uh, this man has paid the dowry. You know, culture say that as a woman, you are not supposed to uh, take part in some of the things, like if during marriage. Hmm? But nowadays, they involve women. Eh? Women also have voice. One of my sister, in, uh, my my sister in law, get married, and uh, I, I was also involved there. Open discussions on gender based violence is constantly leading to social change and more peaceful homes. I was actually bad. Eh? Hmm? I was really bad. <laughs> actually, I was the one doing GBV on him. When he married me, even one day like this, he did not slap me, but I slapped him. You see. So I came to realize that that one was really in discipline that I have really uh, done to my husband. Hmm? So I found, I say, ah, now I am a leader, I should not do that. When I do that, how can I go and advise others? Hmm? So one of the women, even last time also, uh, came to me and gave me testimony. The husband used to bring, used to abuse her. Hmm? But now, this training of SGBV, GBV, whenever she came for a meeting, she will recall those things eh, on a phone. But very early in the morning, when, when, when they wake up, she will just eh, play that, eh, eh, that whatever they, they record, they, they, she, she recorded. Then the husband will be hearing. Eh? Then one day, eh, I, I call the women and the, the men eh, all together. We also talk, we talk, we talk. Then when, when he go back, he say, oh, he's very sorry. Hmm? Kumbe, what he had been doing all this time, he had really been uh, torturing the woman. But he, this woman should forgive him. Hmm? And he believe me, nowadays he's drinking, but he don't abuse. Connecting the dots between doing business to language and to raising children is not an easy puzzle. But Susan Paul Yasa, a South Sudanese refugee woman in Maji 3 paints a clear picture. This is her story before and after benefiting from the project. I can able to speak English, how to teach my children. If they come back from school, I can take their books. 
Okay. You can able to read this. At first, without effort, I cannot able to check the books of my children. If they come back, just I give them food, they eat, they went to play. At first, I start the effort. I think that I'm going there to play, to sit idle, and my children is suffer at home here. Madame Rebecca and Marcy, they put me down and they advise me. Now I can able to do my business because Eva have empowered me. Now I can able to welcome customers in my small restaurant. You know, without English, other other customers don't know the language which I can use. And the language which she has used, I cannot able. And as like and now, you have listened and also I can try. If it is not like it for others, but at least. Thank you, customer. Thank you. Skills training continue to give a ray of hope to the beneficiaries. Women like Mary Mandi from BDBD and Palma Ajute from Ajumani Town, who benefited from the basic video advocacy training, are now walking the talk. I happen to get some skills in video shooting, in editing, and uh, the skills that I got from Refugee Law Project, it has got more impact in my life, where I happen to use some of them in the field. Of course, when like a women gathered for their programs, most especially commonly in the settlement, we have a sales group for women, and I have to take their picture as a report to give, and the women are able to to get some support through that. Yeah, and also in the working place, I'm able to take some pictures for reporting, for reporting whatever. My recommendation goes like this: If possible, that they will be organizing for training, it should be complete for video advocacy. It's really a practical thing. Without the tools, we cannot do anything. We need cameras, we need computers for editing our work, and they are very expensive. So we really urge the donors to, to come out and help the trainees so that we can really do some of these things practically. Support groups are very impactful in women's lives in terms of peer-to-peer -peer support and livelihood. Chris Tabo, the chairperson of Unity Women's Group, realized the importance of coming together and mobilized women out of her English for Adults class to start up a village savings and loans association. They are now able to access loans to do commercial farming from their local savings and support one another. Our expectation here is after he harvesting this one we are going to sell it but uh, some part of the money we are also going to use it again here in this field some of the part of the money we are going to sell it for women like Gonga Besta and her group members, the synergies between Refugee Law Project and Away Project by Care International facilitated addressing some of their economic needs. Care came and they told us that they will support us with the box and we are saving. And then after that, they also gave us this machine. I'm Eva Lana, English for adult. This learning really helped me in my life because my life is now changed. Even on the way when I'm passing, I can see people, I can greet in English, using English, I'm now free. Yeah, at times in the community, in meetings, I will even take minutes and even I will raise issues. Really, that, that English helped me. All these successes under the LIP project is attributed to the good partnership and collaboration with stakeholders in the districts, implementing partners' contribution, guidance and flexibility of the donors, a strong relationship built over time with beneficiaries, coupled with a professional and dedicated human resource base. Many, many women used to sigh down based on, uh, on the, the, the background of the country of origin. 
in the country of origin, uh, mostly women say men are supposed to be at the forefront. It is something which was already embedded in their, in their brains that men, it's for men. Me, I'm not supposed to come in front, but based on the intervention, the support from UN Women and implementation by the Fujilo project, many women were able to come into leadership positions, which was not the case during the emergency. First of all, there is a lot that is needed for our community to know, but sometimes they are limited by the language. Most of these programs come in English. Some of them don't know our local language, you know. So when this program came uh, for teaching these people how to express themselves in English, first of all, uh, personally, I was very, very excited that within a very short time, these teachers taught these women, they are almost of middle age even above. But let me tell you, the most surprising thing is that these people are able to express themselves in English very well. The training has really uh, given me a lot of conf confidence. Now I can able to do my business because Eva have empowered me. Before, if I go to hospital, I need someone to come and interpret for me. But now, through Eva, I can interact freely with the doctor. Our coexistence with the host is perfect. We don't have any problem with the host communities.